We are talking about the Bentelli today. The Bentelli 4PR uh, lifted four person golf cart LSV, whatever you want to call it. Uh, so today we're going to be going over, let's see here, doo -doo 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 -doo, rubbing in and out of the garage, uh, the roof hitting the garage door, coming in and out, see what the roof looks like. We're going to do some top speed runs and some hard braking runs, do some cornering and steering radius, run it over some rough road, smooth road, talk about the tire noise maybe, uh, driving in the rain. We're going to have to find some rain and then drive in it. Yay. You're welcome for doing that one. Um, maintenance upkeep. Uh, if nothing else, I'll just plug the video that I did before on battery maintenance. And charging times, kilowatt hours, uh, how much electricity does it take to charge up the batteries? Most days whenever I run my cart, uh, I can go anywhere from 20 to 30, maybe 35 miles. And uh, that typically takes it down to about half to three quarters charge. So we'll get to the charging uh, video in here. I've got a, one of those kilowatt things from Harbor Freight. So uh, stick around. Does this look right? Ow! Where did I put my screws? I'm not sure this is how it's supposed to go. So recently it was asked, how well does my Bentelli 4PR lifted cart fit into a garage door opening? So I'm here today to give it a measure. And I'm gonna put the tape at the opening of the garage all the way at the bottom. measure going up it is right at 82 and a half inches right there where my finger is and the door itself is looks to be right at 83 inches okay so measuring at the base all the way up hopefully you can see right there 82 and a half inches is right about where the uh, little flapper thing is there. And the actual hard plastic on it is right at 83 inches. And if I move the tape to the floor, right on where the, uh, the, the track is, right here, measuring up, you can see that it is right at 83 inches. So, let's go ahead and see how bad it rubs. Okay, I'm in the garage now, and we're gonna see just how close it gets to the garage door when it's up, and see if we can see any scratches up there, just see what it looks like. So I'm going to take a step up on the back Ooh. and you can see that this is pretty close. Try and move around here, see if I can get my head worked up in here. Yeah, so this is just how close it is to the garage door when it's up. And see if I can get this in here. Right there. That's the main area where it appears to be rubbing when it comes in and out. It also kind of sounds like it slides a little bit across the top right here. Might be able to see a little bit of that right there. And this is after, what are we at now? About three months of ownership. And I'll be honest, this thing's probably gone in and out of this garage at least once, if not two or three times every day. So, yeah, it rubs, but this is plastic. That's not going to rust. It shouldn't cause any major problems. And to actually see something like that from a distance away, you're either going to have to be a really tall guy up in a lifted truck or something. Uh, one of the problems that I thought it was going to have Right there, you'll see there's a bolt sticking up, and that is what holds the roof on, or steady, right here. I have not had this 
rub a single time. So, that bolt right there that pops up, that is not an issue for me on this cart with that 82 to 83 inch clearance. Yeah, it's a new day and I just got done. I didn't just get done. These batteries have been charging all night. And I, let me get around here. So yesterday I got it down to just below, like about two notches below the battery. So it was about halfway in between the zero and the low end of the battery right here, which is a bit, little bit lower than what I'd normally be uh, using it. But got it all charged up and duck under here. We got our kilowatt meter hooked up and it is currently reading wow there's way too much stuff in the way so we can squeeze this thing in here so you can see it 3.74 kilowatt hours is what it took to charge that up so if you're paying 12 13 cents a kilowatt hour it's about 40 45 cents then to charge that figure rough math don't quote me on it so uh I think we're going to go for a little spin today uh, with fresh batteries and do some 0 to 25 type times. So let's get it rolling. Okay, this first road, this first road I'm going to test on may have a slight downhill, but we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. And hopefully you can see that still. Zero and go to the floor. next one may be a little tricky. We've got some geese in the way. All right, and floor. straight flat road right here. Alright, three, two, floor. This one has a slight incline.
one behind me. And we're going to go from that 29 and a, 25 and a half or so speed limit that it has. And I'm going to slam on the brakes in three. No, oh, hang on. Three, two, one, stop. I'm not sure if you heard that. That was a pretty hard stomp and it looks or sounded like at least one of the rear tires locked up. And going back up to 25 and stomping on the brakes really hard in three, two, one, stop. Ooh, I smelled rubber on that one. And yes, both of the rear tires locked up on that one. And we got somebody coming up behind us again. That 0 to 25 is a little sandbagged. I didn't floor it to begin with. Okay, for this video here, we have a 25 mile an hour traffic sign with one of those little uh, speed detectors up there. Maybe you can see it or you can't. But I'm going to go from the dead stop straight down to it. And go. There you go. Just enough room to hit that 25. Card here is it's got a pretty wide turning radius so I've been wondering these big tires and the uh, amount that it can turn left and right what is its turning radius so I grabbed a fiberglass tape measure and a little stake here let's go ahead and do some donuts or circles in the grass here and let's measure those out and see just how big of a turning radius this thing has let's give it a twirl slightly dizzying fun time. So now let's go ahead and measure it out and see what we've got. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna put this tape measure right here. If anybody knows how to measure a turning radius, let me know. Because uh, we're just going with it here. All right, so what I did is I went ahead and put the stake right there and measured it out straight across. Don't mind the dog poop there. And I believe that is, if we can get the whole circle in the shot, I tried to smash the grass down there real good. What it is, I pulled that pretty tight, and let's get this right here. I am fairly certain that it's 16 feet, 9 inches. It's kind of hard to see the smashed grass line, but the furthest that it gets is right about there. It's 16 feet, 9 inches for the turning radius. So, 
I'm not sure if that's uh, good or bad, but I do know that uh, so other people's club cars and uh, Easy Goes and other manufacturers like that, they can turn quite a bit tighter than I can, especially in like parking lots, trying to maneuver and get in and around things. So now you know, 16 feet, nine inches, can do 360, that's the, uh, what do you call that, diameter? I think that's what that's called. Radius, diameter, circumference, yeah. So 16 feet, nine inches, diameter of the full circle. And if I didn't do that right, somebody drop a note in the comments and let me know that uh, I didn't do that right and this is how you should do that. I appreciate it. Now you know, I was just thinking about it. I'm pretty sure that the back tire is the one that matters. So let's go ahead and redo this and use the back tire instead. All right, if we're going by the back tire measurement, it looks like it's right at 15 feet. Let's see if I can bend this around. So right here at 15 feet, maybe you can, maybe you can't see just how smashed down that grass is. Right there, yeah, right there appears to be about the, the furthest distance at 15 feet, maybe 15 feet and an inch or so. But we're gonna go ahead and call that 15 feet then from the back wheel. I think that's a more accurate representation. Drop a note in the comments. Maybe I did this right, maybe I didn't. I don't know. Well, it took a little bit before I could get this section of the video on. Got a little bit of a sprinkly day. Decided to go for a little cruise. Just so you could see. Oh, I almost got to use the horn. Almost. So close. So we got some sprinkles going, we got the windshield wiper going, and there's a little bit of a side breeze coming in, so I'm getting a little bit of sprinkles, but honestly it's not that bad. Single speed windshield wiper, I'm not sure much else I can tell you about it, but everybody's got an on button and an off button. There's some uh, Rain-X on the windshield. Let's see if we can find any golfers over here. Nope, they have cleared out. Oh, hey, look at there. We got a rainy day on our hands. Sure, I'm glad this thing has a windshield and a wiper. Roof seems to be keeping me pretty dry in the light sprinkles we got going on here. You can kind of tell by the windshield about how many sprinkles we got. It's just a nice gentle rain. There's a slight breeze from the side, so I mean the seat is getting a little wet. But uh, taking turns, uh, most of the water comes flying off the roof. Out of it. Uh, but yeah, not too bad in the rain. I like it in the rain. It looks like we get to ford some water. That one there wasn't too bad. It's this one here that looks quite interesting. I almost wonder just how deep this is going to get. As long as it doesn't go over the depth of the tire should be good. Ooh, that is filling up the rain. That was a little bit deeper than I thought it would be. Let's take a look back at that one. Yep, there's definitely going to be some puddles there for a while. It's 
So I've been driving around for about 30 minutes or so uh, in the rain. And yeah, it seems to do really well in the rain. And what I'm thinking is this lip right here is uh, letting some water infiltrate just a little bit. Uh, I'm not sure how well you can see that, but uh, there's some water that came through the dash and is coming down uh, right in front of the, the pedals. Uh, it's just right there, so maybe only a few little streams of it. It kind of makes you wonder just how much of that then is uh, water coming through here and how much water is going the other way underneath the mat or, you know, just uh, dripping out here underneath it somewhere. But it seems to do pretty well in the rain. Uh, if you're a backseat passenger, uh, let me get some lights on here. Uh, if you're a backseat passenger, uh, like I said, I mean, it's about 30 minutes of driving and some sprinkles. But yeah, handrails, wet. Uh, seats, uh, wet. I wouldn't call it wet, wet. It's not soaking, but I mean, you know, it's, it, it's got a lot of sprinkles on it. The roof doesn't protect everything. And then once you get back here, I mean, this back area is soaked because the tires that do stick out a little bit further than the side here that are going to throw water up and dirt and mud and everything else. And it seems to keep it pretty dry underneath where the motor is. Uh, it's kind of surprising. You know, of course, water doesn't go up very easily, but uh, motor, oh, the motor is warm, very, noticeably very warm. I've been riding around for a while, so it's not uncommon, but yeah, it's good and warm. There's not a lot of splatters or anything around the differential, uh, even. I mean, obviously, around the wheels, yeah, it's going to be wet. But wheel wells seem to deflect the water pretty good. Let's see if I can get up under here a little bit. I mean, there's brake lines are wet. I mean, it's, it's the underside of an exterior vehicle. I mean, come on now. What, what more do you really expect? It's doing pretty good in the water, I think. Yep. And one thing that I noticed uh, going around corners, it flings water off of these little uh, areas here. And with the roof design, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's good and wet. But as soon as you go around those corners, these little channels right here uh, throw the water off. So if somebody's sitting back here and you take off and, uh, you know, all the water runs to here it's going to be pouring down towards their legs and uh, not much you can really do about that other than maybe uh, put some drain holes in here somewhere wherever you see that the water's collecting or put four drain tubes at each uh, corner so the water would drain down and then you could run some like clear tube down if you wanted to then just drain out somewhere uh, i don't really see the point in all that though all right, let's see what's next on the video. One of the things I just thought of as I was cruising around, since this is a uh, three or four month update video, the uh, mirrors right here. You'll see that I've got them kind of pulled way down. Watch out, please. Anyway, so you see that I've got them pulled down like this. When they were standing straight up, looking like, you know, real mirrors, how they should be probably. I don't know if you can tell by this view right here from right in front of my nose, but that mirror is a blind spot. It blocks what you can see right there. So I canted the wheel down, the, wheel, the, uh, the mirror down a little bit, just to make it a little bit easier to kind of see around that. It would have been a whole lot nicer if they would have put the mirrors either closer to the top up here or, I don't know, smaller, different, I don't know. But just an observation. It's been too long making this video. Had the cart for about four months now. And a quick check again. And we went from half battery today, 2.47 kilowatt hours. Not too bad. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, issues, drop something in the comments. Let me know what you think. If you have any ideas, thoughts, Throw them out. All right, till next time.